It's great to be here. Y'all don't stop shouting. Y'all don't stop dancing. Y'all don't stop praising the Lord just because the pastor asked me to come up here. Uh 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 uh. uh. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Uh, stand up with me. Stand up with me all over this place tonight. Stand up with me and anoint yourself with the Holy Ghost. Uh, give yourself that anointing. Give yourself that liberty. Give yourself that peace. Uh, you don't have to sit down because Evangelist Steve come to the pulpit. You don't have to sit down. Uh, I'm nobody special. I like what I've been seeing. I like what I've been feeling. I love to feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And I'll tell you the truth from the time I walked through the back door till the time I've been standing right here, I felt Jesus. I felt Jesus. You know what? Sometimes I, I, I stop and I stare and I look at people, sister, and I say, man, how can you go through life without feeling Jesus? If I can't wake up in the morning and feeling, if I can't get in the middle of my day and feel him, if I can't go to bed and feel him. I feel like something's wrong with me. I feel like I haven't prayed enough. I feel like I haven't shouted enough. I told you don't sit down. Stand up. The Bible teaches us he inhabits the praises of his people. That means he comes down and he lives with us. And if there's one thing I know we need tonight in this country, in this world, in this church, we need more of Jesus. We need for him to sit right beside us, right on top of us, right around us. Uh, we don't need anything else in our lives but Jesus. Listen to me as you worship the Lord. You know what? If you want to run the aisles, run the aisles. If you want to dance, dance. If you want to sing, just break out in a song. I don't care what you want to do. This is God's house and there are to be liberty in it to serve the Lord the way that he's instructing us to do that. And you know what? You ain't going to interrupt me or inter bother me or anything in the least for shouting the house down. You know what I was thinking as I was sitting there waiting on pastor? I was I, I I was honestly sitting there thinking, and and <clears throat> a couple weeks ago a story come across uh, the rock solid Facebook page and the internet and all of that, uh, and every once in a while you get to read a story that is so awe inspiring, so unselfish, so. Plain and simple, it's just Jesus, Pastor. I'm quite sure you hear him more than me being the pastor of this church. Uh, but you know what? Uh, this was one of those stories, and it didn't develop into one at first. But what caught my attention was there was this lady, and she was asking prayer for her son uh, who was going to fly somewhere up northeast, I believe, uh, down to Florida to spend some time with his family down there. And the reason why he was going to fly down there was because she had to take her husband to a hospital, if I'm telling the story right, uh, somewhere in Texas, I believe, uh, and she wanted to send her son to Florida, but he had never flown by himself before. He'd never been on an airplane by himself before, and, and he'd probably not been too many places without his mom and dad before. That's what caught my eye. Why? Because I have my, my youngest son, Jacob, uh, has been flying on airplanes since he was five years old <clears throat> by himself a lot of the times uh, in between. Between Louisiana and back up to Michigan or Delaware or Pennsylvania or Florida, wherever I might have been at the time. But I know that feeling to put your son on board a plane and you don't know if he's going to make it and you don't know if he's going to come back. All you got is the faith. But that's what caught my eye to that story. So I simply stopped what I was doing and I, and I, and I thought back to the first time my son flew. It was an all-out blizzard just south of Detroit where we lived at and I put him on a plane from Louisiana and sent him to Detroit and you know what he made it just fine but I can remember my stomach turning so bad when I knew he had gotten on that plane I can remember the nerves so clear and it doesn't matter <clears throat> that that the planes are safer today than they ever been that's your baby up on that plane and you're worried about him but you know what that's what caught my attention to this story and and, and I just said a quick player I said Lord touch that 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 couple son and let him get to Florida and let him have the time of his life uh, a few days went by a few weeks I can't really remember I don't even know when I read that story I read so many of them and I get so many messages and emails and all that uh, but ever like I said every once in a while one will stick out uh, well you know what about a week ago or so I can't remember uh, uh, this person come back across Facebook, and I was at work, and, and, and I was sitting down, and I, 
I, I, I began to read it, and, I, and instantly from the word go, I felt the anointing of the Holy Ghost in it. Uh, she said, you know what? Uh, I've, 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 the, the insurance company, I believe, would not accept her husband uh, where they needed him to go until a certain day in December. I want to say December 14th or the 4th. Uh, but you know what caught my eye in that story? Listen to it. I'm, I'm going to share the best I can. <laughs> with it and I want you to get it I want you to hear it I want you to see it the way that evangelist Steve saw it uh, she said I gotta I gotta leave my husband they wouldn't accept him uh, into the hospital until certain days uh, and 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 I gotta leave and go back halfway across the country uh, and get some things for him and I uh, and then I gotta drive all the way back across the country uh, and pick up my youngest son uh, who's flying back from Orlando uh, and then I gotta get him and I gotta drive back down uh, to Louisiana I believe if I get this story right uh, to be with my husband because he cannot get in the hospital uh, because of insurance reasons they didn't approve him uh, until such and such a day in December and now, now think back this might have been one or two weeks ago I can't remember but let me tell you something uh, I saw that woman uh, I seen that woman's faith uh, I saw what she was going through uh, and it almost took all the discipline I had in my body uh, at work not to run and start shouting and you say, Brother Steve, what are you talking about? Uh, that seems like a depressing, lonely story. Uh, I want you to take your time tonight with me as I take my time. Uh, and I'm going to explain the faith in that story. Uh, I'm going to explain to you uh, what we got to be tonight. Uh, how we ought to be seeing things. Uh, you know what? Uh, that little lady, uh, she got into a truck, a car, an SUV, whatever it might have been, uh, in Louisiana. Uh, and she drove, if I'm not mistaken, clear back from from Louisiana, somewhere on the East Coast, maybe Pennsylvania, I want to say. Uh, and then she got her stuff in Pennsylvania, uh, and she went all the way over to Oklahoma, I believe, to pick up her other son. Uh, and then she got in that same vehicle, uh, and she drove all the way back to Baton Rouge. I don't care if she drove 10 miles or 10,000. Uh, I want you to hear my point. Uh, the story uh, doesn't have to be exact. Uh, all I got to do is get close, uh, and you'll see the faith that this lady had. Uh, you'll see the faith, the, the faith uh, even though she's facing one of the hardest things somebody could ever face in their life, uh, she didn't care, she had faith, uh, she was on Facebook pastor, and she was asking for anybody that would to pray, uh, and you know what, that was early in the day when I saw that post uh, you know, like I told you, I saw her faith, uh, and I'm going to show it to you in about five minutes, so just hold on for the ride, keep shouting, keep dancing uh, when you hear this story uh, you're going to know that God's real when you hear this faith, <clears throat> you're going to know that your faith is not in vain. When you hear what one little lady, what one husband, and what son, one son done, you're going to know. But I got home that night. It was late. <clears throat> and I sat down at my desk. And I turned the phone back on. And I was scrolling down. And I found the story again. And the Lord told me right there, get a hold of her son. Get a hold of her. Put her up on the wall if she'll let you. The wall of prayer that's on the website site. Uh, put her up on Facebook. Uh, get people to help you pray. Uh, call the whole rock solid nation together uh, because I'm going to do uh, for this lady what she's asked me to do. Uh, so you know what I did? I turned my phone on. I reread the story. Uh, I don't know her from Adam. Uh, I know some, know some of the family here uh, and I know, uh, but I don't know her. Uh, let me tell you something. Uh, I sat there and I read the message again and again and again and again uh, and I sent her a message. I said, sister, I see your problem. I hear your problem, and I want to pray with you. But if you would for me, give me permission to go over and put your photo and your husband's photo and your son's photo up on the website. It has access to eight different countries. Over 30,000 people visit it. I can get the prayer we need if you'll just allow me to do that. You know what? When you send those messages, Pastor, you'd be surprised Somebody's crying out for help. Somebody wants somebody that somebody that somebody to pray. And you know what? <clears throat> You'll send them a message, but you won't get an answer for two or three or four days. So as I sat at my desk, I didn't really expect a reply. 
I sat my phone down <clears throat> and I got up to go get me something to drink. Uh, and before I could take three steps, uh, my phone vibrated uh, or it made a noise or something. Uh, Pastor, that quick, that woman got back to me uh, and she said, by all means, I would love for you to pray. Uh, I turned right back around, not knowing where she was, where she was doing or what. Uh, and I said, well, could you please uh, send me a photo uh, that I can get up on the wall? Uh, that somebody can look and say uh, this man and this woman and this son uh, this family they need the help from the Lord God above uh, I said just send me a photo or tell me which one on your page uh, to use and I will gladly do it uh, and you know what I thought she's driving or whatever she won't take the time to stop and do it uh, so I'm constantly trying to think I know this woman God's already told me to pray for this woman uh, I know what God's told me to do sister uh, but you know what I want the picture uh, I want people to be able to see uh, there's God fearing people in this world uh, that need just a prayer uh, they need to know that somebody cares listen to me uh, so you know what uh, I didn't get my drink again the phone went off uh, and I had the picture I took that picture and I put it up on Facebook and I simply said to pray. I said to tag it, share it, flip it, slip it, dip it, whatever you do with them things on internet, but do it. Let's not play around with it. This family needs help. This family needs prayer. This family needs somebody to reach up and touch God. Pastor, look at me. You can't tell me there's not power in prayer. You can't tell me there's not power in asking somebody to pray for you uh, how many know we live in a world today uh, somebody can be sick uh, and still come to church and not ask for prayer uh, how many know uh, they don't even stand up when the pastor says does anybody need prayer <clears throat> I thank God this little lady uh, and this husband joined together uh, and they said we need prayer uh, you know what uh, in just 24 hours on Facebook alone uh, over 4,000 people uh, took a look over 90 something people shared it over a hundred left comments that we're praying and you know what you know what you know what God moved God moved now I'm gonna show you something <clears throat> let me tell you something my throat's a little rough tonight but that don't matter listen to me church <clears throat> Listen to me clearly. I want you to see that little lady. She's in her car. She just had to walk away from her husband fighting something. Let me tell you what she said in one of her messages. It was the worst feeling to leave my husband and the way he looked when I walked out that door. Let me tell you something. She knew what she had to do. She had to get back to her house, get her stuff, get her son, and get back. Woo! You're not hearing the story, are you? Huh? Look at the face she had. Huh? She turned huh? on her heels. Huh? She got in her truck huh? and she drove thousands of miles huh? to get her stuff. Huh? And riding down the road, she's praying and begging and pleading God. Huh? And somebody come across her phone huh? and said, lady, huh? ma'am, huh? sister, huh? woman, huh? I can get the prayer that we need for this situation huh? if you will just allow me. Uh, she never batted an eye. Uh, I don't know if she was driving uh, or she pulled over to find the picture uh, or somebody was driving for her. Uh, I don't know the whole story. <clears throat> I don't need to know the whole story. Uh, all I know uh, is she told me yes uh, and the, the whole rock solid nation sprung into action. Uh, let me show you something. Uh, her son's flying one way. Uh, she's driving another. Uh, her husband's laying in a bed. Uh, but she's still calling out to Jesus. It don't get no better than that. I don't care what you're going through. Listen to me, church. I don't care where you're at. I don't care what problems you may have had in your life. God is the answer. <clears throat> she's driving down the road. Think about it. Her husband's sick. Her son's flying off in the opposite direction. She's got to drive one way to drive back the other way to get her son to drive where she just came from. And here comes somebody named Steve Bush across your Facebook. Sister, can I pray for you? Can I put your picture up? She never hesitated. She never hesitated. 
that's what we need today. We don't need people that see the problem. You got to see the problem. You're living in it. We don't need people that get focused and fixed on the problem. That little lady could have very well said, no, 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 no. Call Cousin Joe and Cousin Mo. Get him to go pick up my boy. Call my sister Ethel. Get her to go to my house and get my things and overnight them to me. Uh Uh-uh. She had enough faith in God that her husband was going to be just fine and she could make the trip. Woo! You ain't hearing what I'm saying or you'd be shouting the house down. I know people that would have never left their sick husband's side. I know people that would have never, ever, 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 ever wanted to do anything other than just sit there and say, woe is me, and sing that old song that the slaves used to sing. Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Not this lady. Uh uh-uh, uh, not this lady. Uh uh-uh, uh, not this lady. Uh uh-uh. uh. Uh uh, not this lady. Listen to me, she's driving down the road, uh, and from the time uh, that that post uh, went up on Facebook and the internet, uh, the internet exploded, uh, Facebook exploded, uh, everybody who's anybody uh, wanted to say they were praying for that young lady, uh, so you know what, uh, if she hadn't have turned, uh, and she hadn't have gotten that car, uh, and she hadn't have made that drive, uh, I would have never known, uh, so don't tell me uh, to sit where you're sitting, and keep doing what you're doing. Uh, Don't tell me uh, God won't ask you to do uh, the hard thing. Uh, She didn't have nobody else to turn to to go get her stuff. Uh, She didn't want nobody else uh, to go get her beloved little boy. Uh, So she buckled up her pants, strapped on her boots, uh, and she had faith in God. Uh, Give me five people uh, like those two in Louisiana, uh, and I'll change the world in the name of Jesus. Give me just five people uh, that can see past the problem uh, and know uh, there's only one way uh, they can get help, uh, and that's through the power of prayer. Give me just one person. And I guarantee you, uh, we'll run the devil out uh, and chase him out. Uh, But like I said before, uh, you can't get fixed. Uh, Give all your problems to the Lord. Listen to me closely. Uh, That's my question tonight. Uh, That's my question tonight. uh, Is what are you going to do when life's staring you right in the face? Uh, This woman loves her husband. Uh, This woman knows uh, without prayer, uh, there's no hope for her husband. Uh, So what are you going to do? When you've got that decision, I like to thank God that she put her hands up driving down the road and said, Lord, 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 you see my husband, but I know, I know you're going to heal him. 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 She never, ever, 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 ever said, Lord, you're not going to heal him. She said, let me get the saints together and let me get people praying that's not a lazy person that's not a person that's going to accept that which the devil tried to do to her and her husband that's a person who knows their power in the name of Jesus that's a person who's going to do whatever it takes to do it in the name of Jesus listen to me I'm wound up. I'm trying to slow myself down because I want you to get this. I knew when I read this story, I was going to preach about it. uh, And somehow, in some way, uh, I knew when I saw uh, Sister Edie Smith's faith uh, and and the ability uh, to look past that which the devil was trying to destroy her family with uh, and call on the name of Jesus, uh, I knew God was going to ask me a question in it. Uh, That question tonight, uh, I want you to stand up with me. uh, I want you to think about it. If you're listening to me on the internet, if you're hearing me across the world, I want to know what are you going to do? Because you can't just sit down. When there's a job to do, you got to do it. And maybe the one who you need to do it for can't do it. But that's when you step in and you don't worry about it. You just get the job done. She put an update. 
Pastor, listen to this one now. She put an update. I, I, I sent her husband a message, and, and, I, and I said, Brother Melvin, I'm just thinking about you, and I want you to know we're still praying. I don't care. To, I, I'm thankful every day of my life that 4,000 people picked up on that, and they ran with it. But I, don't, I want more than 4,000. I want 40,000 to pray. But I want that man to know that those prayers have been heard, and I'm praying right along with him. She put up an update and she said, Melvin's still in the hospital in Louisiana, huh? but listen to this part of the praise report. Uh, the doctors told her the spots were going to grow and grow and grow. Uh, she said the doctor did a test uh, and the spots are not growing. Woo! Uh, don't tell me uh, that God won't move. Uh, don't tell me uh, there's no more power in prayer. Uh, don't tell me uh, not to call out to those uh, and ask them to pray. You see, the spots didn't grow. Huh? They might have just remained the same, huh? but they didn't grow. Huh? You see, he might not have been home for Thanksgiving, huh? but God gave his wife a safe trip, huh? and she got the boy back, huh? and they're all together. Huh? They might have had Thanksgiving in the hospital, huh? but God took those spots, huh? and he didn't let them grow. I saw something he posted the other day. The medicine makes him feel funny, but he's got his family. Woo! Somebody. <laughs> you don't even understand the power that this family's got. They have never one time dwelled on the problem. They've always dwelt on what God's going to do for them. What are you going to do? You got your Bibles. Turn with me over to Exodus, the 14th chapter, the 13th verse. You can, you can write down part one. They tell me to do that all the time. Brother Steve, take it in parts. That'll slow you down. I don't want to slow down. I want somebody to know huh, what some family did huh, that, touch, that made me so thankful huh, that I got Rock Solid Ministries International. Huh, and I can see a story like that. Huh, and I can put it up. Huh, and God can step in huh, and change things. And change things. It's not because of Brother Steve. Make no mistake. I'm not patting myself on the back, tooting my horn, or beating my cymbal. I'm just simply trying to show you what you got to do. You can't just stand there. You can't just lay there. You can't, you can't, you can't. You got to stand up and fight like this little lady did. Exodus, the 14th chapter, the 13th verse, listen to it. And Moses said unto the people, listen to this part one, fear not. Fear ye not. Fear ye not. God ain't never told a blood-bought Christian to be scared. I'm quite sure Sister Smith was nervous. I'm quite sure. I don't even know if I'm saying her name right. God bless me. I don't know. I'm quite sure she was anxious. I'm quite sure there were times she didn't know her left from her right or up from the down. But let me tell you something. She was not scared. If she would have been scared, she would wouldn't have asked for prayer. Huh? If she would have been scared, huh? she would have made somebody who somebody see that man. Huh? She wouldn't have accepted it. Huh? But you know what she did? Huh? She got in her car. Woo, somebody better listen to me tonight here. Listen to me. Huh? She got in her car. Huh? She got in her car. Huh? And she said, you know what? I, I can see her now. I don't know if it's true, but I, I, I'm telling you right now, I can see her. I know it's true because I got a Holy Ghost filled mother. Huh? And I've watched your pray heaven down for my father, for my brothers, for myself. I know what this little lady did. Make no mistake. I can see her telling her husband goodbye. I can see her getting in that car. And I can see her raising up her hands. I can see her crying clean from Louisiana back to the East Coast. I can see it so clear. But you know what I can't see? I can't see her scared. Because it's somebody's praying. It's somebody's claiming. It's somebody's shouting. Is somebody's calling forth. Uh, you know what? Uh, they ain't scared. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not. Evangelist, what are you talking about? Let me tell you something. <laughs> 
Listen to me closely. If you don't want to be scared, there's only one rule. Know what the Word of God says. Why? Because when you can sling that Bible like a dope dealer slinging dope on the corner, when you can sling that Bible like a professional baseball player throws his baseball, when you can sling that Bible like somebody that shovels asphalt can sling asphalt, when you can sling that Bible verse after Bible verse after Bible verse, you ain't scared. But I'll tell you this, the devil is scared. I can see her now driving down the road, and the devil comes up on her corner on her shoulder and says, well, you know what? This ain't going to work. That ain't going to work. I can see her now. Isaiah, the 54th chapter, the 17th verse. No weapon, no weapon, no weapon, no weapon, no spot, no sickness, no bad thing formed against me and my family shall prosper. I, I, I can see her so clearly. You know what? A few miles down the road, the devil would have come back at her and he might have said, well, I got you this time. And she flipped it over again. She started slinging more verses. She didn't get scared. She said, Lord, your word says in Psalms, the third chapter, the sixth verse, I will not, will not, will not be afraid of 10,000 people who have encamped themselves around about me. You know what? She probably stopped to get gas and seen one of Brother Melvin's favorite foods somewhere. But you know what? The devil come up and said, well, he ain't going to get to eat that no more. You know what I think she did? She closed her eyes and she said, Ephesians, the sixth chapter, the 11th verse says, put on the whole armor of God that you may withstand, withstand, withstand the wilds of the devil. No, she didn't run. No, she didn't turn around and drive that truck back and make other arrangements. She kept straight on the course because she wasn't scared. I bet the devil come to her somewhere going down the road and said, well, you couldn't get him into this hospital and you can't get him into that hospital. There ain't no hope. There ain't no saving him. I bet, I bet, Pastor, she flipped over there in the first John, the fifth chapter, in the fifth verse, and said, Who is it? <laughs> Listen to this verse. If I don't quote it right, don't get mad at me. Who is it? Who is it that overcomes the world? Only he that believes that Jesus is the Son of God. You can't tell me that woman was scared. I've cried because I've thought about her driving down that road. And every time the devil came at her, Pastor, I could hear her quoting Bible verses and calling out the name of Jesus. Nobody that's scared is going to get in a truck maybe by themselves and drive thousands of miles. But see, you give me a Christian that knows God, they know they're not alone. They can be in the truck in the middle of the night, but my Jesus is with me. They can be in the storm of their life, but their Jesus is with them. And that night driving down the road, every time the devil came at her and put some worthless thought in her mind, she flipped it back. She flipped it back. She flipped it back. I can hear a quote. Isaiah, the 45th chapter, the 17th verse. Greater, greater, greater is he that is in me. Greater is he that is in my husband. Greater is he that is in my son than he that is in the world. Woo! Somebody, listen to me. Not only that little sister driving down the road, but that man, Brother Melvin, laid up in that hospital that had to watch his wife walk away to go do what had to be done. I can see that devil slip on in there and say you know what? I got you right where I wanted you. But I can also see Brother Melvin playing his day. You know what? He's been in enough church. He said enough prayers. You know what I'm telling you? He knew what to say when that devil knocked on his door. You know what he said? Nah, uh, 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 devil. Isaiah 53, 8 
says, but he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. With his stripes, I am healed. I am healed. I am healed. Brother Melvin never quit. You can't tell me he was scared either. He just let the love of his life get in the truck and leave, not knowing if he was ever going to see her again, not knowing if something bad was going to happen. But what he did know is that Jesus, that Jesus, that Jesus, that saved his soul, that's going to heal him, that's going to put his family right back together better than it ever was before. You can't tell me. He was scared because he was slinging Bible. Listen to me clearly. You can't tell me that. I can see Brother Melvin thinking real clear. <laughs> he might have quoted 2 Timothy, the first chapter, the 12th verse. That is why I'm suffering here in prison, but I am not ashamed. Did you hear what Paul said? It's the same thing Brother Melvin and his wife said. I am not ashamed of it, for I know the one in whom I trust. Listen, listen to what the Paul, the great apostle Paul said, because I I know Brother Melvin and his wife and that whole family down there saying it tonight. That is why I'm suffering here in prison, but I am not ashamed of it. For I know the one in whom I trust. Listen to what he said. I told you all I get tongue twisted when I'm quoting Bible verses. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him. Let me tell you something. She's driving down the road. She committed her husband unto Jesus. She's driving down the road. She committed her son to Jesus. He's laying in a hospital bed, but he committed his son and wife to Jesus. What are you doing? What are you doing? Well, first off, if you ain't scared, you're committing every single thing that you own every day of your life to Jesus. Now you're starting to understand the story, ain't you? Now you're starting to see that sometimes it takes great faith to move things. And I, I've been around a long time, huh? but I'm telling you this family exercised some of the greatest faith I've ever had the ability to see in my life on that night. Part two. Listen to this. Stand still. Go 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 back to where you were in Exodus. Look what look look what it said. Listen to me. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still. You give me somebody that's not scared, they're standing rock solid still. When you know that you know that you know that you know that you know, as my dad used to say, you're gonna stand dead still on that which God has told you, and you're gonna do exactly what you know to do. You're gonna run, you're gonna shout, you're gonna pray, you're gonna dance, you're gonna call forth all those things things that be not as though they were she stood still driving down the road in that truck part number two is stand still because you got the word of God in your heart David said hide my word in your heart so that you may not sin against me Jesus looked at the devil and said man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceedeth from the mouth of God stand 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 still Somebody that's scared can't stand still. You ever seen somebody get in trouble for doing something? They got their hands in their pocket and they fidgeting and, and they dodging and they moving and they running all around. You know what? Just stand still. Somebody full of Jesus, you couldn't move them with an earthquake. You can't move them with a dump truck. You can't move them with a roller, a paver, a backhoe, a bobcat. You can't move them. You can go get a Sherman tank, hook a rope to them. But if Jesus told them to stand right there, if Jesus told them their healing's right there, if Jesus told them their anointing's right there, they will not move. Look at your pastor about to shout the house down. He knows what I'm talking about. He's done seeing the comings and goings 
going to more people that probably told him, Pastor, Pastor, God sent me here. Two weeks later, they're gone. They're across town. Why? Because when God tells you to do something, you know, you know, you know, you know, it was God in heaven or all of hell cannot move you. You got them Christians now that God sent me here, Pastor. But if you ever preach like that again and bring Brother Steve back, I ain't going to be here. See, God didn't send you. But God told that woman, get in your car and drive. I got your husband. Don't worry about it. She, when she, she got her car and she was standing still, not in the physical, but in the middle. The Bible says our fight is with our mind. The devil comes after our mind. And if anybody had a reason to get confused, if anybody had a reason not to see that which God wanted to do, it would have been this little lady because she said it was the worst feeling I ever had to leave my husband there. But yet she stood up tall. She stood up straight. She got in that car and she did what she had to do, knowing the whole time God was going to take care of all of it. Stand still. Stand still. When you stand still, God's working. When you stand still, God's able to do that which you cannot do. Just do everything he tells you to do and stand still. Like I said, I'm not talking about physically. I'm talking about mentally. Stand still. Don't be scared. Know the word. Get it down in your heart. Listen to the next part of that. I love this part. I love this part right here. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord which he will show unto you today. You understand what I'm saying? Listen to me. When you stand still, you can see things that you weren't supposed to see. When you stand still, God can talk to you. Huh? When you stand still in your mind, uh, God can begin to work with you. Huh? When you stand still, stand still, stand still. Huh? You got a clear vision of everything. Huh? And you know what you'll see? Huh? You'll see the salvation. Huh? You want to know what the salvation is? It's a five-lettered word. It's J-E-S-U-S. -S. That's your salvation. That's what you're going to see and every verse you quote you're going to see Jesus and every prayer you pray you're going to see Jesus and every thought you have you're going to see Jesus when the doctor walks in and he says it's inoperable you ain't going to see that you're going to see Jesus when your son is running wild you ain't going to see that you're going to see Jesus if you stand still and fear not just stand still and see the salvation. And the salvation is Jesus, your pastor. He knows exactly, because look at him. Look at him. I would tonight that pastors all over the world would just do what Jesus had told them to do and stand still in it. Don't run from it. Don't hide from it. And stop trying to please people. I'm tired of jelly back, no backbone having pastors and preachers and evangelists. You know what? You got your good little message. You got your good little sermon. Well, why don't you take it and throw it away and get in that Bible and get you something that's going to help somebody. Get you something that's going to lead somebody from the darkness into the light. Get you some of what that little lady had that came and got in her truck and drove all those thousands of miles and stood still because she saw the salvation of her Savior, Jesus Listen to me clearly. Stand still and see the salvation which he will show you. See, you got to understand something. If you're not standing still, God can't show you anything. 
If you're running to and fro, God can't show you anything. If you can't sit still and you can't do that which exactly you're told to do, God can't show you anything. God can't work with you. God can't talk with you. Why? Because you're too busy telling God, I'm going to go over here and then I'm going to go over there and then I'm going to go do this and then I'm going to go do that. You better sit still and do exactly that which God has called you to do. I know. I know it's hard. I know it's lonely. I know it's a hard way to go. But if you'll do it, if you'll do it, if you'll do it, God will show you today the salvation. Something I preach all the time at work and, 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 and to my family is be consistent in that which you say you're going to do because consistency is everything. If people see you do it one day and the next 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 day, they're going to expect you to do that. But if you pray on Monday, skip Tuesday, pray on Wednesday, skip Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and just show up for church, guess what? Everybody He's going to know you're consistently haphazardly playing. But when you pray every single day, you know what? The phone will ring in midnight. The private message will come in. The internet will go crazy because somebody knows that you're praying. Somebody knows who to get a hold of when they need to stand still and just pray. Thank God. I can stand dead still when everybody else around me is moving. That's why I consider myself fortunate because that verse says stand still and see Jesus, the salvation. But I, I, I say Jesus. Listen to what he goes on to say. This is God talking to Moses. It says, for the Egyptians whom you see today, ye shall see no more. Woo, somebody needs to shout. Uh, somebody needs to dance. Why? Uh, let me show you uh, what that little lady was claiming uh, from one end of the country to the other. Uh, let me show you uh, what that little man uh, was claiming uh, laid up in that hospital bed. Uh, that Egyptian, uh, that problem, uh, that enemy, uh, that one uh, that's bound you down uh, and put you in servitude. Uh, you know what? Uh, if you'll just stand still and fear not, quote the Bible, uh, talk and talk call it forth uh, do everything that you know Jesus has told you to do uh, like that family's doing right now uh, that problem you got uh, that Egyptian uh, it ain't gonna be there no more uh, God's gonna step in uh, and he's gonna take it out uh, what do you mean evangelist uh, I told you about her last update uh, the spots hadn't grown why uh, because she's called forth those things that be not as though they were she said to the mountain uh, be thou removed uh, and cast into the sea but most importantly she stood still she stood still and now God's begun to move and that Egyptian that problem that sickness that death it's not there it's being decreased it's going away and God's going 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 to have his way in their life why because she knew exactly what to do you're already standing with me I'm fast I'm done. Listen to me closely. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? I'll tell you right now. I'm going to be like Joshua and say, as for me and my house, I'm going to serve the Lord. What are you going to do? I'm going to read the Bible more. What are you going to do? I'm going to call forth more. What are you going to do? I'm going to stand up for Jesus more. What are you going to do? I'm going to stand still more. What are you going to do? I'm I'm going to fast more. What are you going to do? I'm going to pray more. What are you going to do? I'm going to love my brother more. What are you going to do? I'm going to have more faith. What are you going to do? I'm going to believe that all things are possible to those that love the Lord. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Listen to me. God ain't through with that family. 
God's going to heal that family. God's going to put that family back together better than they ever were before. If you haven't went on Rock Solid and read it, I challenge you to go on Rock Solid and read it. Find out what a true faith-based Bible believing, tongue-talking, water-baptized, Holy Ghost-filled woman of God can get done because if she hadn't have went on there and she hadn't requested prayer, I wouldn't have seen it and I wouldn't have one of the greatest messages I've ever preached about a lady having faith for her husband and for her family. Those are the times I want to look at the devil and say, now get you some of that. Get on out of here, boy. You can't touch that. You can't do what you wanted to because there's just a little simple lady calling out on behalf of her family. Stand up with me. Never before has a story touched my heart so close and so dear because of the amount of faith that was used. If God told somebody to go to the store tonight in the baddest of bad neighborhoods, you know what? I believe somebody would say, Pastor, you've heard it before. I believe somebody would say, no, 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 no. God wouldn't tell you to do that. That's a bad neighborhood. You see my point in it? What are you going to do? What are you going to do when your loved one's laid there sick? What are you going to do when somebody's strung out on drugs? What are you going to do when you're in somebody's house on Thanksgiving Day and they're crying out for help? They're crying out for attention. They're crying out for somebody just to love them. You know what? What are you going to do? I'm going to keep on keeping on keeping on. I'm going to keep on doing that which I was put upon this earth to do. I know I done made somebody mad in here tonight. I watched them walk. I know I done made somebody mad on the internet. I'm going to keep on doing that which I'm called to do, and that's to love my brother and to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ all over this world. Put your hands up and tell me you're going to pray for that family tonight. Put your hands up and tell me we're going to call forth a miracle for that family tonight. Put your hands up and tell me that God's will is going to be done in that family's life tonight, 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 tonight. Pastor, God bless you is my prayer.